Hello and welcome to another Leak Code video. So today we're going to be doing the problem of the week for this week, and it's going to be missing ranges. So you're given an inclusive integer range, lower to upper, and an assorted unique uh, integer array nums where all the elements are within the inclusive range. Number x is considered missing if x is in the range, but x is not in nums. Return the shortest sorted array such that the list of ranges covers all the missing numbers. That is, no element of nums is included in any of the ranges, and any missing number is covered by the ranges. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is going to be pretty straightforward, and we're going to look at this example. So we're going to draw this 0, 1, 3, 50, 75. And then we are going to have a 0 and 99 upper bound. And so there's a couple ways you could do this, right? So what you could do is you could go through this and then you could, for every single one of these numbers, you can check like, is it in here? And then you're gonna have these sorted. But the easier way to do it is, so missing numbers, like think what missing numbers means. Missing numbers aren't in the array. And so the way we're actually gonna do this is gonna be like this. We are going to compare every element to every other element and we're just gonna go down. And then we're going to see what numbers are missing there. And we're going to start from this part, and then we're going to go to this part. So in our first comparison, we're going to compare the first number in the array to the lower bound to see what's missing there. So here we're going to compare the 0 to the 0, so nothing is missing. Now we're going to compare the 0 to the 1. And if there and if there's a gap there, then that's going to go into our output. And this whole nums is guaranteed to be in this range, so we don't need to like double check for any of that. So we're going to compare here. Is there a gap? No, there's just a gap of one, so there's nothing missing. Now we're going to look here. Is there a gap? Yes, there, the number two is missing. And so, but the only thing that's missing is the number two. So then this is going to be two, two. Okay, now we're going to compare here. So we are missing the numbers four to 49. So we are going to write that in. Okay, now we're going to go over here and we are missing 51 through 74. And then finally, once we're done, we need to compare this number to the last number here to see what we're missing here. So actually, here all of this. And so we can see from that, that we are missing 76 to 98, right? Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to compare the first number to the first thing, and that'll be our starting thing. Then we just compare every two adjacent numbers, and then we compare the last number to the last one. And that's going to give us all the missing numbers, and we can simply take those and put them in this array of arrays. And if we compare that to the output, that is correct there. And then for the second example, so you are given a negative 1. The lower bound is negative 1, and the upper bound is negative 1. So we're going to compare the negative 1 to the lower bound. There's nothing missing. And then there's no other number in nums to compare this negative one to. So then we're going to compare that to the upper bound and there's nothing missing as well. So that will be GNMT, right? Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, so let's code that up. So we are going to have a resarray. Now we need to compare the first number. Oh, by the way, what? how many numbers are in nums? So nums length can actually be uh, so num's length can technically be zero. So if num's length is zero, let's just return. So if not num's, we can just return. So every single number is missing. So that's just going to be lower to upper. Okay, there we go. Now, let's say now we do have a num's. So remember, what we need to do is we need to first compare the first number in num's to the lower bound to see what's missing. So let's do that. So let's just say like diff equals um, num zero, num zero minus lower. Yeah, and then if diff is greater than one, then we need to figure out what's missing, right? And so that's pretty straightforward. So it's going to be res.append. So the thing that's missing is going to be um, this is going to be lower plus one. And this is going to be nums zero minus one, right? 
Like if we have numbers like zero and 25, then the numbers that are gonna be missing, the first number missing is one greater than this. And then the last number missing is one less than this. So if this was zero, two, then it would just be one, one and so on. Okay, so that's gonna take care of the lower bound. Now we need to go through every single number in nums and compare it to every single number past that. So we're actually gonna go for i in range length nums minus one because we want to compare every number to every number past it so we don't want to use this number we just want to use these numbers and then we're going to compare it to the number past it okay so same thing so diff i mean we technically don't even need this diff yeah so so we can just say if nums um, i plus one is minus we can just do this nums i is greater than one that means there is going to be something we need to append right so if there's nothing missing the numbers are going to be one apart so if this is greater than one that means there is something missing so then we just do this append thing we could technically do that as well here so instead of this diff let's just have the same kind of format so we can just have if num zero minus lower there we go Okay, so that's good. So now let's, uh, yeah, do that. And then now let's put in these numbers. So rows append, and we're gonna append an array of nums. So it's gonna be this nums uh, i plus one, and it's gonna be an array, remember? So, so this, and then the second element is nums i plus one. Minus one. Okay, so that'll take care of like every single comparison. Now we need to do the final comparison where we compare this last element to the upper. So let's do that. So if upper minus nums last element is greater than one, same thing. So it's going to be up, uh, no, it's going to be nums minus one plus one, um, and then upper minus one. Okay, and then we just need to return the array. So let's see if I screwed anything else up. Looks like I did. Oh, um, so this should be 98, yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, so, so I, made, I made a small logic mistake. So, uh, yeah, so, like, let's say our numbers are like this, one, two, three, or whatever, four, and then our lower and upper is 0, 99. So what I did was I did this minus this, but technically the zero isn't in the array. So technically the first number actually has to equal the lower bound because the zero isn't in the array. So if it started at zero, it would actually have to look like this. And so I made that mistake here. So if nums so this is actually greater than zero. They should. So what I could I could just say if num zero does not equal lower, there we go, and then it would actually be this, and same thing here if nums negative one does not equal upper, there we go. Yeah. So so I made that small mistake here where this seventy six ninety eight should actually be seventy six ninety nine. So we're comparing the seventy five to ninety nine. The 99 isn't actually in our array. And so the the numbers that are missing are 75 plus one up to the upper bound. And same thing for the lower bound. So that was our, we were, we had a little off by one here. So this should be 99. Okay. And so if res uh, does not equal this, then it should do this and then this. And that should be correct this time, I think. Uh, no. Okay, so I think they want you to return this. So they want you to return an array and arrays. It should be an array of arrays, I think. Hopefully that's it. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, acceptance rate 32% for an easy problem. Funny. Okay. Um, so let's think about the time and space here. So for time, we are iterating through this array of nums and we're comparing every element to every other element, but that's just big O of n. And for space, 
if you don't count our result array, which most solutions don't, it's going to be big O of one because we're making nothing else. And if you do want to count the big O of n, then what's the worst case scenario? So the worst case scenario, we're going to have every single number missing. Um, no, we're going to have like every other number missing, right? So that would be worst case, which, which would be big O of n. So let's say you have number 0 to 99 and your array was like 0, 2, 4, 6, and so on, right? All the way up to, you know, we would just keep missing. It would just go every two elements and then, and then our output array would look something like 1, 1, three, three, five, five, and so on. It would, it would have every odd number in here. So this would be length and uh, n over two if, if, if we just had every other number in this array. So if you don't count the res, it's gonna be O of one. And if you do count the res, it's gonna be O of n. All right, so that's all for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. We actually just got a hundred subs. So thank you guys for that. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.